Members, but before I get into the bill, um, I, I typically don't do this, but because of the importance of this and the impact on on our state, um, I, I have a prepared statement that I'm going to read, and then I'll go through the bill, and then be glad to answer any questions, Mr. Chairman, if that's good with you. You're recognized. Uh, thank you. Uh, members, COVID has had a significant impact on all of us. Uh, many of us have had the virus. We have family members that have had the virus. Some of us have family members that have had hospital stays. Um, we know those, unfortunately, who have lost their lives uh, because of COVID. Uh, it's had a significant impact on our state from Men Memphis to Mountain City. Over the last 19 months, we have taken extraordinary measures, extraordinary steps to protect the most vulnerable, to protect our population from COVID. Unfortunately, in taking those steps, government has moved outside the bounds of the Constitution. The God's Constitution, the federal and state constitution are still the government governing documents of these lands, of this land. And those documents make clear that government's responsibility is to maintain a framework of ordered liberty. Over the last 19 months, government has overstepped those bounds and the guardrails that have been set forth, set forth by our founders in the Constitution. Even in the face of a health crisis, freedom, individual liberty, and the unalienable rights that are granted us by God must be, must be defended, preserved, and protected. Ronald Reagan said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed down for them to do the same. Over the last 19 months, what we have experienced has been unprecedented. Uh, we were here in March of 2020 when the world basically came to a stop. And before I get fact-checked by whomever, uh, as I walk through this list, this is, a not, this is probably not in the correct order, but you'll understand the point. Uh, we entered in March of 2020, we entered 15 days to flatten the curve. Some, some would say we're 19 months into 15 days to flatten the curve. Safer at home orders were issued. We had to stay home because we didn't have enough PPP. Then we had to stay home because we didn't have enough ventilators. Businesses were in our state were deemed essential and non-essential by the government. Non-essential businesses were closed by the government. And I can tell you as a business owner, every business is essential. Everyone has a reliance on every business to provide for their families. Schools were closed. Many didn't reopen until the fall of 2020. And many of those schools that did open had significant safety measures placed on the children that attended. A vaccine was introduced at the end of 2020, which was, a, which was supposed to restore our way of life. Instead of restoring normalcy moving through 2021, the vaccine and fear surrounding the virus led to vaccine passports, even though on August 5th, the CDC director made clear that the vaccine does not stop transmission. More people died from COVID in August, September, and October of this year than they did August and September and October of last year. Now the Biden, has made, his Biden administration has taken a full step toward authoritarianism by weaponizing the free market against the people of this country by issuing orders that federal contractors must, must require their employees to be vaccinated, costing thousands of Tennesseans their job. On social media last week, I asked for those stories to be sent to me. In a four-day period, I received 1,200 emails from people from Memphis to Mountain City that are losing their job. Not half of them, roughly half of them work for federal contractors, the other half did not. This is having a significant pact impact on the people of our state. I need to remind you too that no executive order has been issued and OSHA has not yet issued a rule, yet many companies who are not federal contractors have begun to mandate the vaccine, taking away Tennessee's ab Tennesseans' ability to work and provide for their family because they will not take a vaccine. And in many cases, as I received in these emails, not taking into account a religious exemption, a right of conscience exemption, or those who have had the COVID virus. Just this week, just a couple of day, days ago, actually, Pfizer announced that they have approved the vaccine for five to 11 year olds. According to the CDC numbers, Mr. Chairman, the survivability rate of those zero to 17 is 99.998%. The infection fatality rate for those zero to 17 is 0.002%. 
in, the, in Knox County, which is the county I'm in, in 19 months, we've had 49 children hospitalized, zero deaths. I know that's not the same for every county. I understand that completely. 49 children hospitalized in 18, 19 months with zero deaths. And according to the people at Children's Hospital, 80% of those children that were hospitalized had some, some kind of comorbidity. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, there is no data or science that supports vaccinating children with an mRNA vaccine in the way that we are vaccinating now, which has never been done in history. The Biden administration has already told the governors on a call a few weeks ago that they plan on mandating this in schools. On Sunday night, and I have this on my Twitter feed for anybody who would like to see, Dr. Harvey Risch, who is a Yale epidemiologist and someone who has been cited over 40,000 times, making him one of the most cited epidemiologists in the country, said, and I quote, if it were my child and this was mandated, I would homeschool them. There is no choice. Your child's life is on the line. And again, you want to look at, jump on my, tw jump on my Twitter feed and you can see the quote. So the question then becomes, Mr. Chairman, where does this stop? We have been in this roller coaster for 19 months, and that is not to minimize this in any way. I too have people that I know that have passed away from COVID. Does not minimize that in any way. But we have a responsibility to maintain a framework of ordered liberty as government. And I'm gonna close this with, with this, Mr. Chairman, before I present the bill. In, in thinking through this presentation, I kept going back to something that was written by C.S. Lewis. Of all the tyrannies, a tyranny sincerely exercised for the good of its victims may be the most oppressive. It would be better for us to live under robber barons than omnip omnipotent moral busybodies. The robber baron's cruelty may sometimes sleep. His cupidity, his cupidity may, may at some point be satiated. But those who torment us for our own good will torment us without end, for they do so with approval of their own conscience. They be, may be more likely to go to heaven, yet at the same time likelier to make hell on earth. This very kindness stings with intolerable insult. To be cured against one's will and cured of states which may not regard as a disease is to be put on a level of those who have not yet reached the age of reason or those who never will is to be classed with infants, imbeciles, and domestic animals. So Mr. Chair Chairman, just quickly in closing, the federal government, again, has completely overstepped the bounds of the Constitution. This has become about coercion and control. This is not about science. This is not about listening to the experts. Mask, force vaccines, vaccinating children, uh, the coming uh, order to vaccinate children in school who are almost at no risk for COVID. The actions of our federal government strip us, will strip us and have stripped us of our bodily autonomy, which strips us of our individual liberty. The Constitution is still the rule of law in this land. The, con the state Constitution, even beyond the federal, references the, protect the protection of the right of conscience and liberty, which each of us took an oath to defend. This only stops when we make it stop. Government derives its power from the consent of the governed. And the vast majority of Tennessee, ba based on the makeup of this body, the vast majority of Tennesseans do not consent to where we stand today.